Okay, so I was watching this uh, promo by Isidium, an add-on maker for Cinema 4D, and uh, I saw this this flower opening, and I really thought I could do it. Uh, so this is going to be a tutorial on how I made my version. So let me show you my version, other version I created, and uh, I created it using geometry nodes. So it's just a flower opening up, and I have some pollen grain and some bubbles as well as uh, the flower opens up and the project files are going to be available on my patreon page and uh, my youtube members as well all the links are going to be in the description all these are animated using uh, keyframe uh, keyframes are so uh, animating these but uh, you can let me see change uh, the scale of the petals you can open uh, the flowers uh, you can uh, open the down one separately you can uh, let me see ah I need to have these opened so that I can show you. Uh, you can also open uh, these. Yeah, so that's the setup. Let's see how to do that. Let's start a new project. Add a plane. Go to geometry nodes. And uh, this is going to hold our geometry nodes. So let's create a new geometry nodes modifier. We can disconnect the input because we don't want that. So we want to first start by creating the petal. And uh, you can go to the CDM video and you can look at the flower petal or you can just get something from Google and uh, look at how flowers uh, look. We're going to use a line mesh. Let me preview this. I'm going to use, I, ha I want it to be going on the Y direction so I'm going to use the Y offset and uh, set the every other unit to zero. Now if I increase the count you can see that uh, we increase the length of the line uh, which is not what I want. I want to use the count to increase the resolution and I also want the length of the line to just be one. That will make it easier for us to work with other nodes like the the color ramp and the float curves. So because they are clamped at one, a value of one. So if we limit this to a length of one, it will make it much, much easier for us. So let's change the offset to end point uh, so that uh, this is restricted, restricted to a length of one. And when I increase the count, I'm just in adding more points and not the length, not, not adding more length. Preview this better, I'm going to add a points. Uh, convert this to points so that we can see the points. And uh, you can see when I increase this, you get this. I also want to see the line, so I'm just going to mark the original line with this point. So we have a line there as well. And uh, yeah, now we want to influence or to change the shape of this curve into a petal, something uh, like that. We need a way to influence these vertical, these vertices to be in a curve like that. There are several ways we can do this. Um, let me just bring this here. I can add a set position. I can add a set position node, set position node. I like this and I'm just going to connect this, uh, connect this here and then this should I can also use a, a combine XYZ grab a gradient because what a gradient does it gives us values at that range from 0 to 1 and uh, if I uh, preview this this gradient uh, before the set position and I think I can just do it this mesh, mesh to point node is just there for us to preview uh, so if I connect this you can see our gradient uh, it's going I think the gradient goes from in the x direction but our points are going in the y direction so i may want to change this to that so we can see the gradient better and if i increase more resolution you can see how our gradient goes to left to right i like that we want to influence the position of uh, the position of our points are uh, using this gradient so uh, we can connect this factor to the y and in the gradient uh, black values mean zero values and uh, white values i uh, mean one value uh, which means Anything in between lies between 0 and 1. Uh, that's why you see that our points are going from 0 to 1 in the y direction since we have connected this, uh, this gradient into uh, the y position uh, or the y offset like that. So now we want this to shape into a petal like this. There are several ways we can do that. Uh, let me remove this preview. It's no longer needed. And then let me reduce the points here like that. So to do that, we can use a float curve and uh, just add. Uh, you can see, before I even add the point, you can see that uh, this line is almost ident is identical to this because uh, it's also just uh, values from 0 to 1 like that. So if I change the values with a curve like this, you can see what I get. And uh, if I push this down, uh, you can see I can essentially create uh, the profile of the curve uh, we want. One thing you, 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 you should note, if you make this longer uh, than one, uh, because uh, the float curve 
is clamped at a value of one, you'll see that uh, it doesn't really work very well. So make sure that uh, the end point is set to one so that all the points are within the range of uh, the car ramp. You can also, uh, of the float, float curve. So we have that, but uh, it's not really a flower. So what I'm going to do is, uh, before I even add this float curve, uh, let me first mute this. Let me duplicate this here. Actually, let me, this, let me mute this. So we still have a line. I want to extrude, use the extrude mesh, but extrude edges and uh, set the offset to zero. Use a combine XY and connect that to the offset. Let's say, let's set this to one. So you can use this offset to determine uh, the position of this. But, uh, so I want this to be the, I don't remember the parts of a leaf. Let me see. Let me see if I can't remember my high school science. Let me see. Parts. Madrib. Yeah, I think that Madrib. So this bottom line is going to be our Madrib. And we, and we don't want it to be affected by the gradient. Uh, it's only this top part here. Let me see. There, the margin. Uh, we want to only influence the margin. So the extrusion mesh gives you a selection of top and side. So the side here would be this, this here. And the top, I think, would be this here this line. If I bring this back, you can see we are influencing uh, the Madrib as well. So if I connect the tops, we are only getting, influencing this only. So essentially creating this curve, but uh, we don't, we still have this offset. If I bring it down, actually it has to be set to zero so that uh, we don't really do, actually maybe we can give it a bit of, yeah, something like that. So we have one side of uh, the flower petal. And if I go to wireframe, you can see how this is subdivided. Uh, we, we need the other side, uh, which should be very easy to do. We can use a transform node, connect this, and then join this back. So basically creating a duplicate. And uh, this one, we want to mirror uh, to scale in the negative uh, direction. So we have something like that. So now any changes we make to this will be reflected in the flower. Yeah, so that's going to be our flower petal. So if we go to the front view, you can see that uh, it's flat down, uh, which is uh, not what we what you would expect for a flower. Uh, we wanted to have this curvy shape as well. So what I'm going to do, we can also use the same setup using the gradient. I'm just going to add another float curve here. Now this time connect this. And uh, this time we want the gradient to go in the Z direction because we want to influence uh, the Z direction. Uh, we're having an issue because now I uh, still have the selection. So our margin is not being affected. So we want, so what we're going to do is uh, before even, let me just my this here. So instead of adding this here, I'm just going to uh, use another set position without this selection so that we influence everything. Yes, have another gradient, have this gradient, and then uh, combine. Basically, do the same setup without the selection. And this connected to the Z, and uh, now we have uh, that. Again, this goes from zero to one. So let's start trying to create this. Can just bring this a bit down. Something like that, I think. If you want further control over the shape of the curve, we can use the factor or we can use a math node. Change this to multiply and that can give us control of uh, the shape a bit. So you can make it stronger or like that. You can even try this here and see basically change other shape a bit like that. You can try different operations and see which one gives you the best results. You can leave this to one. Yeah, so this is a value we could expose later. Now, our petal is almost done, but uh, we need more subdivisions in this. So let me add a subdivision surface. Uh, I'm going to have to add this after this. Uh, because right now, if you look at uh, our normals, let me see if I can... Yeah, you can see that our normals are flipped, their face orientation. I'm just using my quick functions add-on to access that really quickly. So you, you can see the, the normals are flipped. So what I'm going to do is uh, make sure that I flip them correctly. So this was, and they're flipped for one side because we, we scaled it in the negative value here. 
and that's why that was flipped so i'm going to use a flip a faces here uh actually i think i need to do this for this so that uh, they're all facing the same direction like that and now i can use a subdivision surface to add more resolution in there like that maybe a level two like that's too much maybe somewhere like that let me turn off my face orientation and uh, save this project okay so now that we have this shape we can uh, you can see the leaf or the petal if you look at this you can see it's a bit has a, a c shape what we can do to do that uh, to add in this uh, sort of c shape here is create a gradient same way we added this we can uh, do this again using a gradient so i'm going to add another set position here i'll grab a gradient texture uh, we can connect it to the z position so we can first preview this gradient just to see how things look so you can see our gradient is running from uh, is running on the y, on the x axis. We want it to run on the z like that. So I'm going to rotate it using uh, first getting the coordinates of the gradient, which is our position. If I connect this, you can see it doesn't really change anything because that's the original coordinates. Now I want to rotate this by using a vector rotate, a vector rotate like this, and if I if I rotate this by 90, you can see we have a gradient that goes on the x-axis. Now, if I connect this into the z, you can see what we're getting is offsetting uh, the position of our points according to the gradient, basically creating that slanting effect. We want a U-shape like that. So let's try using, because uh, the gradient goes from, starts from zero and goes to positive values on the right and then negative values on the X, that's why you see on the left, that's why you see we have that slanting effect. Uh, the points on this side are getting a negative value and the points on this side are getting a positive value. So we want a U shape. So that means we want to change this to all positive values. So to do that, we can use, we can use a math node that will convert negative values to positive values. And that is the absolute value uh, that gives us a V like that. But this V is a bit too strong. Let me just scale this down a bit. So I'm going to add a multiply, a, ma a math node, change this to multiply so that that is not too strong. It's so that we just have a, sim a small uh, V like that. And uh, we can add a subdivision surface, surface here. And uh, we can even reduce uh, the count here so that we give a chance, so that we give our subdivision surface a chance to work properly. Uh, oh when when you join these together uh we need to merge the middle vertices as well so i'm going to use a merge by distance so that the middle vertices are merged and now we have uh, that that u shape uh, like that and uh, another thing we could do if you look closely the outer edge is pulled up a bit so we can use and to create an edge mask so i'm going to do uh another set position this time we want to use edge neighbors yeah edge neighbors preview this i need any edges that are that are only connected to one face and that will be these edges that are on the outside of the boundaries of uh, the flower so i'm going to use a math node basically compare so that i can get uh, we need more subdivisions, so I'm going to add a subdivision surface here. And you can see how we're getting that outer edge. I can uh, just pull that, push that up a bit using uh, uh, this selection. Just push that up a bit. But uh, we're also pushing these up as well. So I can bring our gradient. I think it was, uh, I can just get any other gradient like this. Uh, remember the gradient just runs on the Y axis. So I can multiply with a math node because I don't want this to influence uh, what we have. Uh, let me see, can I preview this? 
yeah, I don't want to have a petal now. Uh, that was the hardest part of this. So yeah, everything else is now going to be a bit much faster. Going to be faster to do, so let's speed up now. Okay, since we have this now, we can frame this. And now we can uh, create a circle, a circle curve. And change these two points, curve to points. Like that. And uh, instance on points. Uh, these petals are going to be our instances. I like that. Now we can use an align Euler to vector. Connect the rotation and uh, the normal to the vector. And then connect the rotation to that. Now you see what we are getting. You can use the radius to control uh, the radius I like that. Now they, they are facing the wrong direction, so let's see. Uh, let's continue with this. We can uh, add vector math, vector math, so, so that we can add uh, we can rotate these on the let's see y direction one. 0.5 I think yeah like that uh, we want control over uh, the shape of the curve so so I can control can add a math node and use multiply to scale the width of the leaf if I want to and again you can always come back to this and uh, play with the shape of the flower. Now they are overlapping. So what we can do is uh, rotate him sli slightly, like you see them, so that so that one is over the other. Here they're intersecting, uh, so we want them to be a bit above each other. Yeah, it's, I think this, actually, yeah, if we, if we rotate this slightly, you can see that uh, they are no, now no longer intersecting maybe we need less and also have um set position yeah but uh just let's add a random random value to the z position i'm going to use a vector value here just want to add a random a slightly random value to uh, i think we can also uh, scale them slightly on the x I'll give them a, a random random value on the x value and i'm just going to use a combine x y z this is set one now this one should be a minimum of 0.9 i think i want uh yeah now this just to introduce a slight randomness uh, to these i like that now also we want some slight randomness in the rotation here. So I'm going to add another combine. Have this set to 1.6, I think. Uh, this should be zero. I'm going to grab another random value and uh, we want to randomize this, this Y value. So very settle. Yeah, something like that. And uh, of course, we, we're going to need less. Yeah, something like that, less particles. And uh, this profile here is too much, so I'm going to come here. I think it's this, and reduce, reduce that a bit, make it a bit flatter. And I can even expose this uh, into the group output. So that is going to be our first exposed values. How have this and I can call that uh, petal curve. I can also expose this as petal uh, thickness. So that should be. And one other thing we could do is uh, let me see what else, what else, what else can we expose? Maybe this as well. Petal curve. 
since we have one so I can make this yeah I can just group this group this and call this petal group and in here I can control let me see the resolution doesn't really matter that much but uh, what matters is the radius so I can control uh, the radius and the count is very important expose that as well outside the group and then I, I can also yeah change the seed the displacement seed I don't know if that could also be useful so I'm going to expose that yeah and this as well maybe that and that what else what else and I think we can also add yeah this rotation rotation minimum so we have a petal group now we can uh, duplicate this and uh, just join the two so we have two groups of petals so i can first change the petal count i did name this correctly but i will just play with them and see so this could be raised up a bit and i need the rotation of the petals so that they are not fully aligned i think we, we need to maintain the same count yeah to have this work correctly and that there is yeah, this scale yeah, like that. You can also add a transform node on the instance so that we have overall control over uh, the rotation here if we want uh, this to open up. So that's the flower. Now we can create this inside piece, this inside piece. And uh, I think I'm going to, because we're using this curve here, I'm going to expose it as an output for this group node so that I can use it as an instancer here. So if I look at that curve, it's just that, and I can fill it in, fill curve, Let me change this to end gone, and uh, then extrude curve. Not individual faces, just a bit like that. And I use a scale. Actually, I can use I just use a subdivisions mesh. Now subdivision surface. Subdivision surface. Uh, we need less resolution here. I, I can even add a scale. scale elements around here and just scale the top side so we have something like that and then use a set smooth yeah like that we can join this back and there we have something like that i think i can we need to move this up a bit so transform Z and maybe scale it up a bit uh, like that. Now let's add these here. Uh, those we are going to start with a, a line, a line mesh. I'm just going to instance that on these points. So we can use a distribute points and faces, uh, which is going to distribute uh, points. Let's see what is this ah we need to increase the density to see other points then we can instance on points and other, the instances are going to be our line now this should be 
a length of one as usual come here that we want to orient them to change them to face the number so i'm going to connect to use an align align Euler to vector no more rotation and then this goes to to that okay can join this back here and we have that because this is too scaled up so i'm going to bring this down like that uh so i was using a, a mesh line here but i changed it to a curve uh, because uh it does the same thing as a mesh line and uh, just to give it more resolution i'm just going to use a subdivide curve and the reason i'm uh, changing it to a mesh to a curve line instead of a mesh line because we are going to be dealing with curves uh from here on so there is no need to start with a with a mesh line here so let's do a realize instances uh, because we want to deal with curves and uh, here outputting an instance and uh, we want to be dealing with curves like i said so now we're going to use a spline parameter and uh, get the set position so the spline parameter again just gives us a gradient just basically a length from zero to the end point uh, basically giving us a, a length like that and uh, the length is one meter so that's why you're getting a gradient like that. And uh, now we want to use this as the offset, the Z offset. Just look at this. Uh, I want this to be in the Z direction. Actually, I can just multiply that factor, multiply it to the position. So if I connect this directly in, you see it's just scaling up everything but i can scale the position using a vector math and uh, setting the spline parameter i like that so if i add a math node here to amplify the effect of uh, the parameter multiply so i've played with the uh, values these values a lot i uh, saw so Sometimes you, you have to do a lot of experimenting to, to know what's going to work. And I think if I add a, if I add a value here, if I add on the Z value, you can see we, we start to see uh, the, the bend there. And this is supposed to be multiply. Okay, you can see they're starting to bend, but uh, yeah, something like that. can add a, a math node here just amplify other effect so basically this is the setup sometimes you have to experiment with different nodes and i think i did it differently from the original here the point is always just to find a way to get it to work so we'll be able to just use this parameter here to change to change these now this is like that now we, we can set give them a radius a curve to mesh and then give this a curve sub in the radius down like that now the last thing we need to do is add this add these so for that we're just going to have a cube uh, just scale it down and make it 
elongated on the z direction in the z 0.5 maybe like that i also want the pivot to be the to be at the bottom so i will just use a set position 0.5 oh is it uh let me see 0.25 yeah i like that now what else what else okay we need to subdivide this subdivide mesh maybe level two yeah that's enough i think i'm going to pull this down a bit since we added sub subdivision and uh, push the bottom up or something like that that's going to be our and then i can use a set smooth i like that and i need to now add it at the points there so to do that we're going to use a point a curve to points two points here and now we need where well, these are our curves here if i look at this you can see the points and we want the last point now we, w we just want the last point here and we can use that we can get that by using i think a spline parameter let me see where i start spline parameter had that node somewhere here so i can come here connect this to the and use a delete geometry and use this as a factor uh, let's see use a compare compare and the reason why it's not working is because because uh this is a spline this param this, this spline par parameter works on splines and that uh, we have uh, points here instead of uh, because we have converted the curves to points so we need to capture capture this here and uh, use that here yeah like that i think we can use less than to delete yeah, i think that's it so now we can uh, instance on points on points and now we have that now if we didn't do this we would have uh, this uh this for every point we have uh, but uh, we deleted so that we only have so that we only apply this to the tip of the curve now i can join these two curves have this disconnected here user uh, join geometry so i can join these two can see now what we have we have a point at the tip i will just want to uh, we just need to align them to the rotation so we have curve to points so i can use a line relative uh, vector connect the rotation connect the vector and then this to the rotation and now uh, we have uh, something like that you need to scale these down quite a bit and I, I don't like how the middle ones are bent as well they should be pointing directly up so i can get uh, let's see i think i yeah that should do it then maybe reduce the radius point point zero zero two now we can join can join everything together and we have a flower one other thing i could do is add some displacement into this because it looks too smooth uh, the petals look too smooth so and this is our petal so you can tell by just rotating this okay so i can add a set position i think i should add it before here uh, set position grab a normal grab normal connect it to the offset and then grab all right let's just preview just the petal itself you can see how things are uh, we want to use a scale elements 
here. No, not, not scale elements, but uh, a vector math, vector math here. And we want to use the scale operation. We want to use the noise, a noise texture to add displacement. Add to this, and that's uh, a bit too much. And so we can come in here, add another scale here, and just bring this down a bit. And I think I need a math node subtract. 0.5 from the noise, I have to bring this back to the bottom. I think the influence of the noise should still be a bit down. Bring the detail up like that. So now if we look at uh, the internal tree, yeah, looks much better. I think we could do is maybe scale, stretch the noise in the direction, in a direction. So, um, I can come to, I can bring in the noise texture coordinates, so position, and I add a vector math, vector math, vector math, like that. Just scale it on the, I using, you can see, I can use the multiply, multiply, and just scale this, yeah. On the noise on the X, so we have something like that. And I uh, can also just bring this in uh, to control the influence of this. Yeah, so I think that's much better. I, I don't think, think I did this on the original version, but I think it looks better like that. And we can do a set smooth on this as well. Set smooth and a set smooth. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I think that's better. And uh, now you can expose a few other things. Yeah, that, that's the width. I think I, I even like this much better than what I managed to do because this one looks more de way detailed other than uh, the version I created originally. So, okay, let's see. Oh, we need to. I need to show you how you can animate this. So, for the animation, uh, we can just animate the rotation. We can expose the this rotation here. Now we can play. Now you can even scale this down if you want. I remember we have two different rotations. Uh, I could name this better. What's it? There is that rotation. Uh, that each each uh, bunch of has a rotation of its own. So uh, there's a lot of parameters you can play with. So you can expose that and uh, or just uh, you can even animate this directly here. If you don't want to have a lot of values there. So let me come back to the transform here and uh, use a combine x, y, uh, because I want, and I grab an input group, group input, so I can expose, how was it, the, yeah, y direction, y, you can name them pro appropriately, so, if you have control over this, we only need control over this, rotation of these, these petals, so I need to find uh, them, where did we align uh, this, yeah, we aligned uh, the rotation here, so without this, the instances are all pointing up like that. And with this, other pointing down. So we can add a vector math, vector math here. Uh, set this to scale, so we can control uh, the scale of these by just 
yeah playing with that so you can also expose this as uh, let me see group input expose uh, this as petrol rotation stick rotation strength so you can animate this value as well yeah, i guess i can expose let's see on that yeah this z value petal scale as petal scale one so so we can uh, have this at 120 opened like that and at frame zero it would be uh, basically we, we want to set keyframes for all these parameters and then here at frame one we want this closed like this so that means the you know we can leave the thickness as is that can stay like that that can also stay Uh, this one should be on the in uh, the scale of this can be down and this can also be down it should be on the ins inside it seems yeah should be uh, like that and uh, the petals thickness is it could be down and and it opens just make it faster now to have a smoother animation you might want to change the frame rate to 60 just like that I think uh, I need to go to the petrol rotation, stick rotation. Just make it less rotated like that. Now the last thing is setting up materials. Uh, that should uh, uh, this the materials are not that hard. Uh, let's see, but uh, let's see. Uh, we need to start with the petal. So I'll need uh, where is my petal? I need to do that before or after the transform anywhere around here I can I can add a set material I'll call this petal so I can call this petal as well so if we go to the material tab Yeah, we have that. Can use a noise texture. Noise texture. If I preview that, that's good. Perfect. Uh, maybe scale this on the, let's see. Yeah, I need this straight a bit. Yeah, something like that. Give this color. So this is going to be the roughness. So the best. Uh, this could be the roughness as well. And now uh, we can also duplicate this. Maybe have the detail to four, have the detail to four, play with this a bit. Now uh, this can be the bump. Bump height. Uh, 
and uh, you can do a translucence because uh, this is a flower has should have some trans translucence like that uh, to make this more realistic if let me actually first go to cycles a bit here cycles They use a uh, sky texture. Yeah, yeah. I think I really like uh, the results. Now maybe we could open this more, just like that. Yeah, I already like the results. Uh, if you look the clo if you look at this closer, you can see that uh, the edges are a bit darker. And the tip is also a bit darker. So um, remember when we were creating the petal, there was uh, a selection I made uh, to make the edges a bit pushed up. Can't remember where that was, but let me see. It should have an edge, yeah, edge neighbors. So if I if you preview this, you can see uh, the edge we wanted. And that's that's the mask we could use. Come here. After this, do our store attribute, and just capture this data here. I can name it as uh, age. I like that. And if I come in here, attribute age. It should see it transferred there. So I can add a color ramp, blend the two, or mix the two like this. Uh, this one we can make a bit more brown, and maybe we can use, uh, what is it called, overlay. This should be up. I could use mix. I see the original looked like this. Yeah. So maybe make this a bit dark. Oh, we don't haven't used it. Yeah, you can see now the edges look more. I don't know, de dying, like you see them here. Maybe make them a bit. Let's try multiply. Overlay. Color. Yeah. Oh, we can use value. Yeah, you see, they become a bit darker, which which I think adds uh, to the realism a bit. Now, um, you can create a different shader for all of these, but uh, I'm going to use uh, the same petal shader uh, for the stock and this here. So I think uh, this stock is, I'm just going to do a, uh, let me see, what is this? Yeah, this, I can use a set material here, do petal, and uh, that should take care of that. And uh, we can also do the same for, for these stocks. Yeah, like that. And now this other, this is a bit different, so we can use another, I'm going to call it pollen, give it a, a yellow material like that and uh, set it for this I should be using pollen like that uh, you can adjust the materials maybe you can set up uh, the camera as you want I did add some grass uh, from my quick 
takes a uh, quick trees add-on. Where is that? Grass, grass, grass. Yes. And I think I also added a water surface from the asset library. Let me see if I can find something. Yeah, something like this. Just to fill up. Uh, I think I need to bring this up and the, the camera a bit up because and maybe give this a slight rotation. Sun is too bright. Maybe make it more blue. Like that. Can come back to the petal material. Increase the translucence. And just find out what works best. Also duplicated a few of these. They will still play. Uh, the animation is still the same. So you can use object. Uh, I think it's under relations. Make single user object animation and uh, you can offset some of the animation for this so that uh, they are not open, opening at the same speed or at the same rate. Uh, also added some depth of field uh, but uh, this, uh, this was the focus. Uh, the f-stops stops, maybe something like 0.1 let's say 0.5 looks too bright. Let's do Something like that. You can add in extra lighting, I think, if you want. And let me just change this spot size to focus mostly on this one. And duplicate another one here. Uh, you can look into the project file uh, that I'm going to be linking on the Patreon or on Blender on my YouTube membership page and uh, just look at how, I'm how I did the particles and everything else. But for now, I think uh, that's going to be it. Let me just show you one more time the final version, my final version. Yeah, you can see, I, I think I, I like the one we have created because it has a little bit more detail on the petals. I didn't do the stock, but uh, let me show you quickly. The stock is quite easy. It's just, uh, let me isolate this for a second. It's just, uh, it's not geometry nodes, it's just a curve uh, with a solid with a, with a bevel like that. And I just use Alt S to decide where I want it to be larger, where I want the bevel to be larger. Anyway, thank you. Again, links are go all links are going to be in the description.